Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, 64th chapter. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who was unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There was no one who calls upon your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord. And do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thank you be to God. We will read Psalm 80 together. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, 
How long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself, and so will never turn away from you. Give us light that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learns its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. 
Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. You do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my God and Redeemer. The Gospel text for the first Sunday in Advent is certainly not anticipated, and it is not welcome. Here in 2020, after a very difficult year for us all, the gospel text begins with the sun darkening and the moon not giving its light. Really, Lord? It is Advent. Where are the joyful, hope-filled, feel-good texts? It's to be found, but we have to look deeper. Which I'm okay with because I want to encourage you to go deeper. While we may not have all the outward trappings of the things that bring us comfort around our traditional Christmas customs, we can be encouraged to go deeper in our personal life and to what Christ means to us this Advent, to look inward at ourselves and where we are. Today I begin Advent and we are unable to meet together in person. We begin four weeks of anticipation leading up to Christ's birth. This Advent is going to seem and feel very different from other Advents. I want to encourage you to not let that stop you from growth. I have heard that Advent is all about history, mystery, and majesty. The history that Jesus comes to us in birth through a woman. The mystery that Jesus still comes to us now in bread and wine and whenever two or three are gathered in his name and someday in majesty when everything will be revealed. The gospel text begins today. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. So what are we doing in the middle of Mark's little apocalypse at the beginning of Advent? Advent and apocalyptic text. How much more can a preacher take? It's important that we put this text in context. The Gospel of Mark was written foremost asking, where do we find God? This apocalyptic text that describes an end time moment comes right before the Passover, the arrest of Jesus, the cross and crucifixion. Jesus is getting ready to leave them. At the beginning of chapter 13, the disciples are enamored by the scale and beauty of the Jerusalem temple and exclaim, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? 13.1. Jesus' Jesus's response is to speak about the temple's coming destruction. Jesus wants to move the disciples from looking for God in a specific place to moving them to finding God in him. He was trying to deepen their understanding. Jesus moves on to speak of a desolating sacrilege that will profane the temple along with many tribulations, including false messiahs and false prophets. He warns that these false prophets will be able to produce signs that will deceive even the elect. Similar to the description of the second beast in Revelation 13, who is able to perform signs to do messiah-like things. I am always amazed at where people find God or think that they do. People credit God with all sorts of things, both good and bad. Sometimes it's a way for them to not be accountable for their own actions and the natural consequences of those actions. It's easier to dismiss these things as the will of God. Jesus warns that false prophets and messiahs will come and will deceive. 
Mark's primary theological question in his gospel is, where do we find God? Not in the temple, Jesus says, it will be destroyed. Which leads to a good question for us today. Where do we find God? Where will we look for God this Advent season? The speech of Mark 13 and what our text is today is part of Jesus' response to the disciples' question. Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Jesus lets them know that the temple's destruction will be pervasive, that the center of religious life will be destroyed. The question is, is when will it be destroyed? And a question for us is what happens when the temple is destroyed? Thankfully, our temple has not been destroyed, but we may feel like it in some ways. COVID-19 has felt like temple destruction to many. Houses of worship have had to close their doors to gathering. Our church remains intact, but rituals and rhythms, religious habits and patterns have been significantly altered. We've had to reconvene in virtual sanctuaries, which are not the same. Across traditions, faith leaders have reimagined and envisioned what it means to live without the physical assembly in the physical space. The disruption that was expected to be for a few weeks or a month has stretched into eight months and counting. Something that was lost in an instant, demolished by the prevalence of virus. It has been heart-wrenching. What were Jesus' words to his disciples 2,000 years ago as he spoke of the destruction then? And as he spoke of the end of things, be alert, keep awake. It would be, is, easy for us to not tune in on Sunday mornings. Things aren't the same. We don't like it. Doesn't seem worth it. Worth what? Jesus' word to the disciples were to be watchful, discerning. Jesus' word in this gospel to the disciples is to stay awake, stay woke, Stay alert. Just because things don't look the same right now, stay woke. What is at stake when we sleep or allow our senses to become dull during times of crisis? Who is at risk when God's people slip into spiritual slumber? What is the cost for sleeping when the call is to see, to remain awake, and to work? And not to be dramatic, but while the disciples were sleeping, Judas, the religious leaders, and a crowd were en route to arrest Jesus. Jesus charged the disciples to work and watch and not to be found asleep. The work referred to here is not specified, but it's often interpreted as the work of discipleship. What happens when the return is delayed? The longer the delay, the more likely servants become at risk of complacency, slackness, and even distraction. They may go AWOL. The absence of certainty about the return can make workers to go absent without leave. We are living in uncertain times. The precise timing of what is to come is irrelevant, both eschatologically speaking, regarding future things, and for us here today. When will we be able to regather? Preparedness for what is to come is what matters. Until God comes, do the work of God. While this certainly would not have been my first pick for a first Sunday of Advent, there is a certain realness in this gospel text to begin the Advent season. It certainly cuts through any sentimentality and romanticism about Christmas. The darkening of the sun, the dimming of the moon's light, and the stars falling from heaven means the end of the world as we have known it. The good news is, is what we have to look forward to with Advent is the birth of Christ that God will become incarnate and will dwell among us. The temple loses some significance. Death will be no more because God will become incarnate and be born of the Virgin Mary. God will take on human form and be like as we are, yet without sin. Christ will live and will die and will be raised from the dead. There is hope for tomorrow. There is something to anticipate during Advent. So we are waiting and watching, and working. We enter the Advent season with a tripartite call to watch, to wait, to work. Watching can be hard. Waiting can cause disillusionment. 
Work can be difficult. We're not even sure what we should be doing. Still, Jesus' disciples are called to actively wait with anticipation. We may not know what is to come, but we know who is to come. In the midst of it, the call to wait and watch and work remains. Amen. Join with me as we recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form two. We ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishops, Michael, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter. For Jennifer, our priest, for this gathering. And for all ministers and people, pray for the church. We ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. We ask for your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray for those on our intercessions list, Marie, Howard, Carol, Christine, Susan, Liz, Mary, Chester and Jerry, Cody, Sarah, Zita, Chuck, Scott, Paulette, Beblon, and Nancy. We ask your prayers for those serving in the military, especially Zachary, Kelsey, Katie, Terry, Holly Ann, Nicholas, and John. We ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. We ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. We ask your prayers and thanksgivings for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including, including Dara Jo Sharp and Randy Keel. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has, has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify, glorify Christ in our own day. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry 
and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. As you know, you're joining us virtually today. Um, COVID numbers in our nation and county are unfortunately up, and we are not able to regather as we would like. I do encourage you, as the sermon mentioned this morning, to try to go deeper in this Advent, though it looks different, um, to look for a way that you can find fulfillment and move closer to God during this time. We still need you. Don't give up on us. Unfortunately, our Christmas pageant is also going to have to be a virtual Christmas pageant. So if you have children or if you yourself are interested in participating and having a part, please let me know. We will be reaching out specifically and asking some of you to take a part and asking you to take your cell phone or whatever and record your little children with the part that we're going to give you and send it um, back to Rachel Wesley. And we are going to compile a virtual Christmas pageant that hopefully you can enjoy in the comforts of your home and see familiar faces and people that you love while we keep ourselves safe. So thanks for being with us today. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us up out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, 
Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Join me now in a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And may the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.